Ah, it's a beautiful day outside. This is Palm Sunday. It's, uh, it's the day that we celebrate Jesus's, what we call triumphant entry into Jerusalem. By the end of the week on Friday, he will have been killed. But on Sunday, he was praised as a king. And we call it Palm Sunday because people took, you know, the kind of uh, whatever branches they could find, which happened to be, I guess, in Jerusalem at the time, palms, probably from some date trees, date palms. And they waved them at him and they put them on the ground to show homage and praise because Jesus was going to be their, their savior. And um, their king had come to save them. But, you know, it's not always as simple as we kind of hope it is. And in the case of Jesus, though on Sunday he was being praised by Monday, um, the religious leaders were already plotting his death and execution because Jesus questioned. He questioned the status quo. He questioned the structure. He questioned all the things that I guess people of the religion at the time really thought very, very important. But Jesus thought of something else that was much more important, and that was, that was the individual. That was our heart with God. And uh, the religious part seemed to be very secondary for Jesus. Unfortunately, we can't be together this Sunday uh, physically, but we can be with each other spiritually. So follow along with me as I, uh, I'm gonna take a walk through the woods here and see what we can find. So good to be in God's creation but it's not easy in isolation when we know we for the time being can't return to being with one another like we used to be there's so many deep questions to ponder about fear I like Larisha Hawkins because she's a, a an educator like myself and and she shares about how when she's uh, working with her students to who, who, who seem, you know, especially those who honestly want to help people that are marginalized around the fringes of society. How can they do it? They're afraid. Listen to her talk about that. I think fear is natural. Um, I think fear is an emotion. Uh, fear is obviously evolutionarily productive. Um, our internal fear drive, the fight or flight drive, um, saves our lives sometimes, right? So I wanna be clear that I think fear is productive, fear is natural. Um, I think the question for um, God's people, for people who have a desire to care for others, um, even if that feels scary, even if they don't know how, I often find with college students, it's not that college students are unaware of all of, you know, the crises throughout the planet. Often they're very aware and what they are is they're paralyzed. They're paralyzed with fear about number one, where to help. What, like there's so many things, what do I choose? Um, and you probably, you're smiling, so I'm sure you, you feel that you see this too, you know where I'm going. Um, like, where do I help? What do I do? Um, so I often, after I give a talk, like, well, you're talking about embodied solidarity. What should I do? I'm like, I can't tell you that, right? Um, the second thing that they want to know is, um, 
not just not just what do I do they want to know how also I can't tell you that because I don't know what your what is um, so they're afraid to choose something and part of the a, a subset of the question of how how do I embody solid with those who are invisible or on the margins, right? Um, they want to know things like, what if I make a mistake? So assuming I move, what if I do something wrong? You know what I really like about Shane Claiborne is his simplicity with the precepts of what it means to be human and then to be a Christian and that we can't stop. And even though the world changes and shifts around us, there's still people that are in desperate need. And so he talks about how the mission doesn't change, you know, how being together but in a different way is still important how looking out for one another, and I love it. He'll talk more about it, but disarming the world is one of the greatest gifts as Christians that we can give, is a path of nonviolence, of love and care. Listen to Shane talk about it. Um, but we gotta, we've gotta always be thinking about those who are easily uh, forgotten and invisible folks that are in domestic violence that are particularly vulnerable you know in kind of a quarantine those who are in prison that aren't able to have visitors right now aren't able to see their lawyers right now some prisons aren't even allowing mail right now so and, and some of that's to protect them but it's also very isolating so that the challenge I think is having wise physical distance without that becoming social isolation to where there's a real kind of paralyzing fear and loneliness that kind of sweeps across our country. Um, and, um, uh, you know, so I, I, I get courage by being with courageous people. So like reading this, you know, my friend's response to the, uh, the reporter, you know, my friend Eliza wrote the story in the New Yorker, but she's talking to Mary Beth and Johanna and they're, she's like, well, what are you going to do? And she's like, well, we're fully prepared to catch the virus. I mean, you know, I, we're using every precaution that we can, but like, we'd be stupid not to think that we're, we might not catch this thing. I mean, we've got, seen, you know, hundreds of folks that they're seeing and stuff. So, but I think, you know, that that's the dance, isn't it? You know, between uh, wisdom and precaution, but still having a fearlessness and courage and love in the midst of this. I think it's a time for wonderful creativity too, as, as Jesus said, to be as shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. And and maybe that's a time that we can practice that. And um, one of the things that we've we've been doing, Dan, I think you know, is we I've got a stockpile of weaponry in my basement because we've been taking, inviting people to donate guns uh, that want to, and we're still receiving them during the coronavirus. I've figured out a way that we can, you know, still take donated guns. Because incidentally, having a gun in the house also makes it much more likely for someone to be a victim of suicide, especially when you're just, you know, confined to a house for months on end, possibly. Um, so a lot of people are rethinking the handguns they've got in the house, their guns. So we've been making garden tools with my, my friends at Raw Tools, which is war flipped backwards. So, you know, we, we've got uh, all the guns that we have. Incidentally, I should be very clear, are all inoperable. They're decommissioned, you know, in my basement. But we're able to make these hearts out of the barrels of guns. So I, when I get off with you, I think that's what I'll, I'll be doing. You know, I'm going to find tune my blacksmithing skills over the weeks to come but we've got to be creative I think we got I've been running getting outside keeping rhythms to our life you know but we need nature so even if that's going for a walk or a run um, and finding ways I, I saw a neighborhood that they're just sitting on the steps and they're singing or yelling at each other you know across the block so um, the, 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 the physical distance we got to be careful that it doesn't end up being isolating and paralyzing you know with loneliness um,
sometimes the hard questions, the questions inside, the questions that we're afraid to say out loud, this is the hardest thing. Sam Garrett does a wonderful job in sharing his own story as a young man, how he himself came to grips with some of those harder questions, even though culture and, and people around him were telling him something different. Listen to Sam talk about his story. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on. And, and maybe, you know, um, you've experienced some of the Christians. Of course, of course you're from the UK, so, so you grew up uh, uh, around and in probably the church in many ways. But yeah, um, but your, your spiritual journey took such a, a, a wonderful, I, I, I've just seen bits and pieces of your story and, and I get fascinated with it because your spiritual journey is so beautiful and, and it was it, you were always it seems like you were always open from a very young age and and um following a path that, that isn't exactly like anyone else's and you were never afraid to just take that path um and i just wanted to say that is so beautiful i wish we all had the courage to follow god in our own way and not have to conform to everyone else's idea of what God is or how God is and how God moves and what a blessing you are. I mean, the music that comes from you is absolutely anointed and, and from Molly too. I think you probably all write together and um, I just I just am just so amazed at what comes from you. I, I've been introduced to you just in the past year by people in my own spiritual community here at Church of the Covenant in Lynchburg. And um, I, I have to say, it's some of the most anointed, uh, just anointed music I've ever, and, and that's our way of saying extremely sacred music um, that you've channeled, I think, I think that's coming through you. And I've just been so honored to be able to even share in those words um, and, and, and share that music with our congregation. We, we just sang uh, Upasana maybe, Oh, two weeks, three weeks ago. So right before we, we got into our lockdown phase here. And so just to give you an idea of, of just the beauty that has come from you, through you, from God, but, but through you has just been yeah. so powerful. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Well, that's a, a great blessing for me to receive because um, you've already hit the nail on the head there, you know, because I'm never um, writing in this way of like, today I'm going to sing a song about this or that you know it really is a very spontaneous uh, thing that happens and I don't understand it with my mind um, but my soul understands it and my heart knows and it really is that feeling of um, being a channel and allowing God to come through in uh, in whichever way that he chooses in whatever moment in whatever appearance that it, uh, expression that it takes um, and I just have to allow that to come through, you know, and and usually it happens at very profound moments on my journey when I've had a very uh, deeply profound moment in my life. Usually songs just, they pour through me and uh, I just get out of the way and I let them come through and I try not to involve my mind or my ego so much and I just allow, allow the heart to uh, express. And uh, what you're saying is so, so true and so wonderful and, and it's something that I really um, feel very connected to because I grew up, as you said, in, in England, here in England and, and I, never, I never could really connect to Christ or Christianity because to me it felt very dogmatic, it felt very, this is the way and all other ways are redundant, no, no other way is, is sacred, no other way is uh you know okay with us you know it's like this way or no way and i could never relate to that you know and from a very young age if i if i can share what, what my experience is with god and uh my experience with the spirit is is that you know from a very young age being a very young boy growing up i would have spontaneous experiences of going to sleep at night and when i would go to sleep I would have these very spontaneous experiences of no mind, no personality, no Sam, just experiences of uh, what I would call bliss, uh, experiences of uh, what you might call heaven or nirvana, or uh, you know, there's many other words, moksha. This this feeling of just absolute serenity. Uh, and then I would kind of open my eyes and be back in my body again and be in my bed and I would be confused as to what that was. 
Um, and it would happen regularly on a regular basis for many years. It happened until I was maybe a teenager. And then I, I kind of forgot all about those experiences until later on in my life. Uh, but that had a very profound effect on me. And uh, it gave me an insight into what I would call God or what I would call the heart. Um, really, there's no words for it. There's no names for that. We can call it many things and get caught up on the names that we call it and believe that our name is the right name. But ultimately, there's only one and we're all a part of that one. And, um, and so then many years went by and I was very dissatisfied, you know, with the culture that I grew up with when I got a bit older, when I was around 18, 19, you know, and I could go out, I would start drinking and going to parties and things like that. But it always felt really weird to me. I could never relate to it. You know, it was kind of like the done thing of like, you know, this is what everyone should be doing at this age. And yet I felt much more as if I was being pulled in a completely different way. And, um, and so then I, I ended up leaving a lot of the friends that I had at the time. People would come and knock on my door and say, are you coming here? Are you coming to this party? And I just wouldn't answer the door, you know, just sort of, I didn't want to know about this kind of thing. I was much more interested in reading and, and, and writing songs and, and really nature was my first teacher. And uh, I would spend a lot of time in nature in the surrounding, surrounding countryside where I grew up. And that really became my solace, it became my refuge, it became my place where I could meditate, I could talk with God, I could pray, I could be with nature. I think for the times that we're in now, it takes a seasoned voice, if you will, a voice that has gone through so much in his own life, and that's uh, Jai Utah. Jai does such a great job. I mean, he's a, a wonderful singer, songwriter, uh, kirtan artist, and has brought so much joy and healing to so many people, but he's so honest. Listen to Jai talk about how he himself was working through the process of, of self-understanding, introspection, and then as he shares a voice of encouragement for all of us, a voice of healing in these troubled times. I started getting letters from people uh, saying how much this music brought light and happiness to their hearts in dark times. <laughs> and I have to say probably for two decades, all those statements, statements went right over my head because I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head, my mind around that. But gradually, 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 I began to let it in and see that somehow, by God's grace only, somehow what I was doing was helping other people. And and now I I, I feel it fully, and I and rather than making me feel oh you know like so special i feel really humble a around that fact because i never i mean i i, I see myself as a little bit self-centered and you know contracted depressed and um <laughs> i never set myself on this platform as being somebody that is helping healing the world i just somehow feel like i'm I got, by whatever, I got it into this circle of healing. And I feel as much a recipient of the healing as I do a, a creator in the healing process. It's, it amazes me every day. And it's my livelihood, which, which triple amazes me. Um, it's not right now, but... <laughs> But it, but it is you. I think that's, I think that that's, that's so well said. I mean, you're, you're the artist and yet, and you've, and, and it's just you. I mean, it's not even artist or category. It is you healing and healing others. Oh, I think that was so well said, Jai. Would you grace us? I, I don't know how you're feeling right now. You may not be feeling up to it, but if, would you grace us with a song? If, 
Well, I wanted to sing song for you. Oh, I love it. My, my, you know, you heard it, my version oh, yeah. of the 23rd song. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear. Cause I know you're with me. Oh, yes, I know you're with me. As I walk through the ruins and the wreckage of life, I have no fear. Cause I know you're with me. Yes, I know you're with me. The Lord is my shepherd. My sweet shepherd. Takes me by the still waters. Oh, he restores my soul. Mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Cause I know I dwell in the house of the Lord. Now and forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, my sweet shepherd, his rod and his staff, they comfort me as I cross the ocean of tears. shadow of death I have no fear cause I know you're with me oh, yes I know you're with me as I walk through the ruins and the wreckage of life Cause I know you're with me Yes, I know you're with me The Lord is my shepherd My sweet shepherd He takes me by the still waters oh, he restores my soul. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Cause I know I dwell in the house of the Lord. Now and forever. Lord is my shepherd, oh, my sweet shepherd. His rod and his staff, they comfort me as I cross the ocean of tears. As I walk through the ruins and the wreckage of life, I have no fear. Cause I know you're with me. Oh, yes, 
Follow 